Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ryan, and uh, haven't seen you guys in a really, really, really long time, I know. But I just thought I'd make a video to celebrate my 420th subscriber. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, this kid's a weed head, but that's not entirely... That's not true. Um, 420 is my birthday, so it's a very special day for me. And uh, in all honesty... I haven't made a video in a really long time because school is kind of awful and it really makes me busy. And So let's get underway because if you have an update video once a year like I've been doing, I won't get anywhere before I die. So, uh, let's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you have your video up for like a year, uh, comments tend to accumulate with a lot of questions. So I'll take my time to address all of them. Uh, so well, I have a lot of questions about the uh, crosshair. Uh, one guy said I was a genius. Uh, that Thank you, but that's not true. Anyway. Uh, so the stuttering, the glitch I was having was because I was hitting random triggers with the raycast. So what I did is I made a raycast layer and then when I hit use the raycast, I'd uh, use it right here. Um, this is some bind. I know binary. This isn't binary. It's some weird way to express binary, but pretty much it just makes it so. I have this raycast layer. Anything with this layer that says raycast layer, then the raycast is allowed to hit. So it's not going to stutter and go around like crazy. Um, a lot of you guys are asking. How come my crosshair didn't clip into planes? And that's because I have two cameras. I have one camera, where are they? The main camera for everything, and the crosshair camera just for the GUI, uh, GUI layer. And this is rendered on top. So anything that I put on the GUI layer, like I'm gonna put this stuff in the backpack here on the GUI layer. So the player can see that stuff all the time. Um, a lot of you guys asking how I was able to aim up and down, but I can't aim up and down. This is just rotating the character a little bit. I do not know how to deform bones at this point without a uh, Unity Pro. But I have had a lead. Someone commented me where they think they found the solution. So I'll work on that for the next couple updates. And uh, next question was about the 2D blending, and I don't think I went in enough time about the 2D blending. So here in the blending tree, I'll try to go over a little bit more. So the locomotion. So here you have nine animations that I did by hand in Blender and imported. And so when you use 2D blending, it's put on a plane. Uh, the X, the... Um, the Y parameter is speed, the X parameter is direction. Um, you locate these animations on the plane using these positions right here. And I apologize for my voice, I'm a little bit sick. Uh, a little nasally, but whatever. <clears throat> so you place these uh, points on the uh, 2D plane. And here you have all nine uh, animations, the idols in the middle. The run forwards is uh, up top, run backwards is on the bottom, and then you have the diagonals and whatnot. So pretty much through code, we're going to change the speed and direction parameters, which moves this red dot around. And if I hit play, say hi, I hit W, it'll go up to here, I'll move forward, because this is all using a uh, root motion. If I hit W and A, It'll move up here. And uh, once again, I do all these animations by hand, but Mechanim handles all the blending pretty nicely. So hopefully that explains everything. I don't know what this value means over here, but all I know is these two values are the position on the plane. And they're all relative, like you'll figure it out, like down is down, back left, blah, blah, makes sense. So next question. Uh, a lot of you guys asked me to make tutorials on specific things and I have to tell you that I am still learning Unity every single time I do something 
I have documentation in the next tab or a YouTube video helping me out. So I don't feel like I'm a good person to make tutorials that are more in depth than this, which is just really an overview. Um, and there are better people out there, and there are people out here that have dedicate the time to it because if I try to make in-depth tutorials every step of this game then I'll never get anything finished so um what's new what's new uh, one thing that's really cool that I added is you can hit the spacebar and you go from the right and left shoulder so this is in a lot of third-person games because as you approach corners say you, you have a game and you only go to the right corner when I try to look around this corner, it's really awkward because my body is exposed, but I can't see anything. So the user can uh, hit the space bar to look around corners a little bit beforehand. And you can still zoom in on each side, which is really cool. So I'll show you the code for that. So that I created, I created, I turned the third person camera script into the advanced third person camera script. So all this stuff in here is the same if you hit the mouse too, then um, it'll zoom in. But here is what, I, it's different. Uh, all these variables I use, <coughs> man my throat. All these variables I use in this area, so I'll just talk about this area here. So there's a boolean if I'm on the right, and then the false is if I'm on the left. So when you hit the space bar, it switches between left and right. And what left and right controls is where is the standard position and where is the zoom position. Oh, okay. Next, what's new? Oh yeah, the uh, ammo display. Um, so here on his backpack, you can see the player's name, his health, the magazines on the left and how many rounds are in the clip on the right and then the bottom number number there is how many total rounds that's just for debugging purposes so as you can see as I shoot how many rounds I have deplete and then once it gets below uh, five it turns red just to warn the player hey you're close to the end of your magazine you might want to reload so then I'll reload and it calculates how many magazines I have left. Since I just used one, it minus it from six to five, and then it refilled my uh, round counter. So if I keep on shooting all the way down, if I keep on shooting to one, then the magazine will also go to a um, red. And then here's a good opportunity to talk about my new bullets. So they're really co cool lasers. I'm using the instantiate and destroy method, which I know is unoptimized. I'll use a better method uh, later. But when I click, it creates a bullet. A kind of pretty slow bullet. And with that bullet, it shoots a ray cast. And based upon things like time, how fast the bullet's moving, it'll figure out what time it should delete the bullet so it doesn't go through an object. Um, right now the bullet is just a prefab with a light point light attached to it and a line renderer. So I, uh, I threw together a nighttime map. I'm not going to show it to you guys yet because it's not finished, but it looks really badass with these lasers going through. Uh, maybe you can hear the reverb zone in the background, but those I'm just toying around with. And then I guess I'll show you the magazine also turning red when you're running out of ammo. There you can see now I'm pretty much I'm pretty close to running out of ammo. So I'll show you guys the script for the ammo. That's not what I meant to hit up. So I put this all on the soldier control script. Uh, right here are just all the references. Uh, feel free to pause it at any time to uh, uh, type it in yourself on your own game. I tend to comment some things. I don't comment a lot. 
because it's kind of a bad habit to comment every single thing. But this is just updating the this all this does is update the color depending on if you have that much health, if you have that many uh, many rounds, if it should be red or not. Uh, where is everything else? I used to co-routine to calculate the ammo. I didn't know what a co-routine is. I don't know how to explain it too well. But pretty much a co-routine is like a void that you can pause halfway. So the co-routine calculate ammo is down here. And uh, when, when you, I don't know what enumerator means. All I found, I found in documentation and it works. So maybe you can find a better explanation not in this video. So it uh, waits until the reload animation. That's about how many, how long it is, 2.1 seconds. And then it'll say, based upon the total rounds, how many magazines you have, how many rounds you have. Which is quite simple. The rounds are usually 12. And then once you get down to no magazines, whatever rounds you have left, you're putting in that round, you're putting in that magazine. So uh, that is that. And then I talked about the crosshair. Uh, here's the laser bullet script. Quite simple. Actually, it's kind of complicated a little bit. So hopefully you'll be able to read through everything and see what everything does. But I'll try to explain my best. So the bullet shoots out at 100 units per second. So I'll, I use little unit conversions to figure out if the ray is, say, 20 units, how long should the laser visually be there so it looks like it's hitting the wall and disappearing and not going through the wall and not going short. So pretty much that's right here. You take the hit distance and you divide it by 10, 100 units per second and that will give you your lifetime. And your lifetime determines when to destroy that object right in here. If it hits a hitbox, which a hitbox is a tag that I made and put on all my hitboxes so you know that object has health. So I found this thing in documentation called send message and it allows you to call a void in another object without having global variables and whatnot. So I thought I'd use it to, if it has a hitbox, tell the uh, health script on that hitbox that I'm um, hit. So that in action, I have this explosive barrel that displays its health doesn't explode or just makes a sound once it hits zero and the I'm hit script says minus 10 from the health and then once it hits zero it explodes kind of sort of just for testing purposes and then here is the red barrel script right here so once again the send message I'm hit calls this void which depletes the health by 10 and then this right here is once again just uh sorry I was, I was like what is this thing so I got sidetracked but this right here is just a reference to the health to uh, visually update it and what else what else what else to talk about oh if you didn't notice I have shadows now because I updated to the latest version of unity so I think this will make everything look a lot nicer. And especially for the nighttime maps. I already tested it out. It looks super badass. And uh, I updated the crosshair a little bit. It looked a little like choppy before. And now it has like a nice fade inside. I doubt you can notice it on YouTube. But whatever, you know. As long as I see it, that's what counts, I guess. Um, so next updates. If you want to stay tuned to those, feel free to subscribe. But the next update is I think I'm going to make this two-player as soon as possible. I'm going to go out and buy two controllers for the computer and then have one of my uh, friends come over this weekend and hopefully it will be ready by then we can fight each other.
and maybe I'll record it, but if not, I'll record two-player eventually, very soon. So if you want to stay tuned for that, hit that subscribe button. If you want to support my next update video, you should probably like it. If I don't get enough likes, I don't know. Maybe I won't post another video. No, I'm just kidding. Um, update videos will be a lot more frequent than they have been in the past. So I've been rambling this ending on. So I'll see you guys later in the next update video.